Well, sea levels are rising, and it's only going to get worse. WBZ's Eric Fisher joins us now. And Eric, that rise happens incrementally, but those small changes can add up to become a daunting and lasting threat. Certainly. Little changes really add up, compound over time. Our sea levels will remain elevated for thousands of years. Scientists around the world agree on that in last week's UN report about climate change. Projections show sea level rise will threaten our way of life in Boston by the end of the century. Now, this model shows what it could look like at Boston Common in an extreme situation hundreds of years from now if we do nothing, which, of course, we can change. Here's David Schechter on the dot. Over time, the trend is just undeniable. The measurements are all saying the same thing. Glaciers are melting, and the ice sheets, Antarctica and Greenland in particular, are, are contributing. So yes, sea level's rising. It's going to continue to rise, and it is uh, one of the most obvious signs of climate change. Sea level rise. It happens so slowly, a tiny bit each year. It can be easy for most of us to kind of ignore it. But while the 30% of Americans who live near a coastline do not have the power to stop climate change on their own, some communities are grappling right now with how to adapt to a rising sea. So there are a lot of big projects that are happening here in New York, and I think the best way for us to see this is to go on the water. We're on a boat. We are on a boat. <laughs> this is the best way to see New York City. It turns out there are a lot of ways to adapt to sea level rise. To see how New York City is doing it, I'm taking a trip on the East River with Daniel Zarilli. It's quite a deal. Yeah, it's great. He was recently the city's chief climate policy advisor. How does the factor of sea level rise threaten the coastline here? Sea level rise is relentless. It's not like a storm or, you know, a, 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 a acute impact. It's, you know, it's just going to keep coming. A new government report found on the East Coast there will be 10 to 14 inches of sea level rise by 2050. In New York City, where there are 520 miles of coastline, projections of future storm surge compounded by sea level rise, shown here in blue, would impact most of New York's coastline and be particularly bad on the east side of Manhattan, where they are now building a massive seawall. As we're going along the water here, we sure do get a sense of how huge this project is. I mean, it's, it's long. It's, you know, almost two and a half miles of protection. How significant of a construction project is this? This is huge. Tom Foley is the construction commissioner for New York City. It would have been easy for us to actually just build a wall, build a wall around Lower Manhattan. But that's not what they did. The new seawall is integrated into a tiny footprint inside a crowded neighborhood. Here, there are 18 floodgates that will be open all the time for people to pass through until there's an emergency. The gates slide shut, and the wall is designed to keep out storm surge. Ten years ago, Superstorm Sandy slammed into New York. This neighborhood, where more than 100,000 people live, was underwater, a sign of things to come. During Sandy, we would have had the water basically up to our waist at this area. So in your projections, do you think it's realistic that in the next 100 years, we're going to get something that gets up to the top of these gates? Uh, potentially, yes. And I think that with the wave propagation, with sea level rise, with climate change, um, that it could happen, but we're, we'll, we will be prepared. The, the right solution for, ev for every part of the city is going to be different. In this case, lower Manhattan, high density, um, there's no, almost no other choice. You just have to harden your defenses against, that's right. Orient me, where are we? Uh, we are at the edge of the Ormond Beach Preserve, uh, which is about 650 acres of coastal wetlands. As the sea is rising, what, what's important about these natural 
places. So wetlands have a superpower. They're able to buffer against rising seas. Dunes, wetlands can absorb floodwaters and protect the communities behind. Alyssa Mann with the Nature Conservancy is telling me much of Southern California's coast used to look like this, a system of beaches, dunes, and marshes protecting against the threats of the ocean. Today, Ormond Beach is one of the last remaining examples of that. Just by standing here, you can like automatically feel that the dunes offer protection. Yes. I mean, there's no, All of a sudden, there's no more wind. No wind over here. By the end of the century, future storm surge compounded by sea level rise would likely push floodwaters shown in blue through Ormond Beach up into these Oxnard neighborhoods and swamp this major naval base to the south. So what's Oxnard's plan to adapt? Well, over the years, Ormond Beach has been chopped up from farmland and industry. The plan now is to restore the size of the marsh, making it into a larger buffer space for floodwaters. That means buying up surrounding land, including the power plant, and returning it to its natural state. When California was developing, uh, we built right up and sometimes on top of dunes uh -huh. and uh, lost that natural protection. And so part of what we're thinking about here in California is where where could we make space for to restore nature's protection. And this isn't just about saving fancy beach houses. In Oxnard, expanding these natural defenses will also protect the largely working class community that lives closest to the dunes. I think what's so powerful about nature-based solutions is that they continue to build up. They continue to provide um, more resilience through time. Down the coast in San Diego, these train tracks are the only rail connection between here and Los Angeles. While the view is amazing, are eroding. As sea levels rise, waves can push in further, pounding the base of a cliff. Here they are considering another kind of adaptation, moving out of the way. There are now serious discussions about relocating the tracks at the cost of up to $4 billion. So now you get out, you can kind of see the cliffs. In a nutshell, right, I mean, the cliffs are uh, vulnerable to this undercutting from the wave action. The Scripps Institute of Oceanography in San Diego is a global leader in climate science, and they've been measuring sea level rise for more than 100 years. And that's where I'm meeting up with Dr. Mark Merrifield, an expert in climate change adaptation. It's pretty clear that something has to be done. So. This is a good time to think about a solution for the train, right? I mean, I don't think there's a whole lot of time left until that. It's like literally on the edge. Yeah. Witnesses say the cliff collapse came with no warning. Investigators say one woman was killed on the beach. Two other victims were airlifted and died later at the hospital. Scripps is trying to get ahead of the kind of cliff collapse that in 2019 killed three people at a popular surf beach nearby. Trying to understand the processes that are driving the erosion and how fast they're acting on the cliffs. Once a week, this truck with an image scanner on top maps the face of the cliffs down to the millimeter. So week by week, they can detect if rocks have fallen off. They're hoping to use the data to create an early warning system for cliff collapse. But ultimately, we've got a lot more than train tracks to think about. Our coasts are lined with industry, roads, and people's homes. What do you see here when you, when, if we came back here in 100 years, what would this look like? That's the problem with this, this issue is that for you and me, in our lifetime, we won't see the kind of changes you're talking about. But for our children and our grandchildren, we're leaving them with a very, very uncertain future that will no doubt be far more challenging than what we're facing now. Sea level rise, driven by climate change, is a slow motion problem that's easy to ignore. But pay attention, and it's clear. From coast to coast, we have got a lot of hard decisions to make about how we're going to adapt. I'm David Schechter, On The Dot. Hmm. And coming up tomorrow on WBZ News, starting at 5, Sarah Robleski is going to focus on our local changes. I'm next.
Fox weather meteorologist Sarah Robleski in Boston, where sea levels are expected to rise a foot in the next 30 years. The city has extensive plans to create more green spaces, elevate areas, and incorporate creative flood protection to reduce the impact of climate change to vulnerable neighborhoods and property. Hmm. And wow. David and Lisa, you know, some recent storms have really shown us a little glimpse into the future about where water can go across the city. Yeah, so much to do and so much to think about there. Right. And not that much time. Eric, thank you. Thanks,